Well, I'm not surprised. You, you're a wonderful cellist and a wonderful musician, and it's, it's, it's just a joy to listen to you. So I don't have any um, uh, advice to give you. I want to introduce some ideas. And you either like them or you don't. You take them or you don't. The thing about Bach is that he left very little information. And so it, about tempo, about anything, actually. He just wrote the notes. And so it's up to us. And so all you can do is just sort of listen and think and connect it to other pieces and, and say, well, maybe that's interesting or maybe this is interesting. What I found about your piece, your performance of it, it was very beautiful and I was, felt constantly distracted by things you were doing. Now that's okay, it's not, you were pointing out beautiful things and, and I found myself a little distracted by it because I think it comes from a different tradition but I'm not right and you're wrong, you understand? I'm just going to suggest what, uh, what the tradition I think it comes from. Do you know this piece? When I was young, I used to hear that piece and and I remember one performance I had, it was very slow. It was very beautiful for a while. <laughs> and it was this slow. And it was great, it was very beautiful. And then I started to wonder, why does he repeat everything? Mm. That's beautiful but then he repeats it. And I got sort of irritated after a while. And then I looked at the music and I thought, hmm, what he's doing is he's playing it on a harpsichord or a clavichord. He's playing chords. It doesn't sound boring at all. And then I discovered an amazing thing which is not apparent at all when you play it slowly, which is that there's a seven bar phrase in here. This is an amazing thing. There's a seven bar phrase. Look, one, two, three, four. One, two, It's a seven bar phrase, but how would you know if it plays so slow that you can't even hear there are bars in there? Mm. So knowing that and taking that on, how would it be if you thought of this in that tradition? 
and then you'll understand why he repeats everything. The reason he repeats it here is because he can't sustain it. There's no pedal. All you can do is repeat it. But he's actually doing that. And this is... So we try it just for fun. It means a completely different way of playing it, but just try it. So... It's gorgeous what you're doing, and thank you for being so flexible that you can just take on, it's like putting on a new suit. Say, oh, I'll try a different suit. So that's great. You're still maybe a little too much pointing out notes that are actually pretty obvious. And then when there's a note that isn't obvious, you've given away the shop. So I would save, when it isn't, when it isn't particularly surprising, the beginning is not at all surprising. <laughs> Should we just try that for fun? So what do you When you do that, then it doesn't become about the bass, it becomes about all three notes. So you hear the whole harmony. If you do this, the other voices become less important. When you do Everybody, everything is important. Do you know that thing? Thank you. 
I always call the, the pulse, the cosmic pulse of Bach. He somehow can tap into the cosmic pulse, and that's what this piece is about. And a, do, 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 do. it just accumulates. And if you look up to the ceiling, can you get that camera up in the air? Right, so up in the air, you see, that's the, look at that. This is a miniature version of Symphony Hall in Boston. Do you know that? So you feel, wow, I'm just filling this hall with, with the beauty, accumulated sound of that cosmic pulse. Can we just do the end one more time? And, and to express joy, because, you know, Bach had 20 children, you know. Just, <laughs> <laughs> just, you're a little bit you're depressed. Don't, if you are depressed, be my guest, it's fine, but don't bring it into the music. On the contrary, let the music suffuse you with that mood of joy and exuberance and love, which is what Bach did better than anybody. Right, so should we just try from, from Miyadati? I wouldn't make so much of that. Accumulating. <laughs> We're priests, and we have a congregation, and we can't afford to do self-indulgent things like be depressed, or look depressed, or, or think about ourselves. I'm a very important priest. You know, the people, the priests like that, or the vicars like that, they take them away in a white van, you know, because they don't understand that people aren't coming to the church to see them. You get that? So that's something. You know what he wrote when he finished a piece of music? You know what Bach wrote at the end of every piece of music? You know what he wrote? For the glory of God. Right? So we're priests. And you just did that. And the faces were just spectacular. That's a successful sermon. <laughs> Isn't that great? That was beautiful. Thank you. And you know what I just want to acknowledge for a moment? Jonathan is a finished artist. He's not a kid. He's not even really a student, he's an artist. He came in here with a beautiful point of view and strongly expressed and convincingly expressed. And then boom, he changed it. That is essential. It's essential for everybody in life, but boy is it essential for musicians. That ability to whoo, just change, put on a new mask. And you did that absolutely magnificently. Everybody appreciated it. I mean, nobody, there was no resistance, no, but wait a minute, I'm important, none of that. You just said, oh, this is curious, how nice, I'll try it, and did it brilliantly. So that's, that's very moving to watch somebody do that. It's very, very moving uh, to see that kind of openness, flexibility, engagement, contact, all that's great, really great, so thank you. <laughs> Thank you. 
Thank you.